When I say who's the master, you say show no. What is up, people? Shown of the King here, and I am here to bring you my review for uh, Avatar The Legend of Korra Book 3 Title Change. Uh, this review will cover the first two episodes, but before I get into the review, I want to give you guys a quick update. As you know, the premiere of the episode was on Friday. Today is Sunday. Uh, I was on vacation. That's exactly why I wasn't able to get that video out to you guys sooner, but uh, just going forward, the videos that I will do for the reviews for The Legend of Korra will be uploaded on either Friday nights or very early morning on Saturdays. But now we got all that crap out of the way, let's jump into this review. So, I gotta say, from what, I, what I've seen so far of this, this new series and this new, this new um, season, I am very, very excited. Uh, the characters look amazing, the animation was well done. The, the voice acting was spot on. I literally didn't have any issues with this episode. But uh, the first, we actually take, this this actual season takes place uh, 12, no, two to three weeks after Korra's battle with Unlai. Now, you know, as anyone else that remembers from last season, you know, it was titled Spirits. It had a heavy emphasis on, you know, restoring balance in the spirit world. And now they're dealing with the aftermath of that. Um, it, it seems like the spirits are here to stay. Their vines are going all through Republic City. It's a big hassle for Cora. It's a big hassle for the mayor who's being a... Best way to say it, he's being a dick. But, you know, that's politicians for you. They they act first and then they actually use their brain later. Uh, but the biggest revelation from the harmonic convergence is the arrival of airbenders. And the first airbender we hear about is actually Boomy, which is Aang's first son. Now, we, from what we understood, that Boomy was not a bender at all. Tenzin was the first airbender that came out, but Boomy being the first one, it was very disappointing he wasn't an airbender at all. But we come to find out that now he is an airbender, just like his brother, so we, we get that revelation right off the bat. And I don't know if you guys had watched my previous video where I kind of hinted at, you know, something like that was going to happen. And I was pretty much spot on, you know, uh, due to harmonic convergence, airbenders are now starting to pop up all over the world again. It's basically the, the last airbender thing, gone. Airbenders are now popping up no matter how old they are. So you can be babies, you can be an adult, you can be an old person. People are just being born as airbenders. So it's pretty, it's, it's, it's a great thing because just before all we had was Tenzin and his kids. But now we have everyone else that can become airbenders, and that's a good and bad thing because we later on find out that these are some really high-ranking uh, criminals that were are being locked up and by the, the, the Lotus. And now their leader has become an airbender, and he was able to essentially break himself out of jail and then start going around the world and breaking out his other partners from the Lotus and just, you know, breaking them out and just, and they all have their unique talents. One of the guys, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too sure of his name right now, but I believe he's an earthbender, but he has the ability to create lava or magma from his earthbending. I don't know how he does it. It looks freaking amazing, but we'll have to, you know, stay tuned to figure out how that works out. Now there was another girl that was, that was in the Fire Nation area. She was held down into the, uh, the depths of a volcano it didn't look like she had arms. I have to confirm that. If someone else can let me know in the comment section, that would be awesome. But it looked like she had no arms. And when they brought her water, she was actually able to, she basically used that for her arms. So she's armless, but she now, she doesn't really need them because she is a waterbender. So her arms are basically made of water. Awesome. The next person on their list is the leader's girlfriend. She's located in the Water Kingdom. The North, it looks like it's the North of War of the Tribe. We don't know what her deal is just yet, but I'm assuming she's a firebender because it looks like they're keeping people in the place where their element is not good. So if you're a firebender, the worst place you would want to be is in the Water Tribe. Just using my basic logic here. Now, Team Avatar is actually on a mission in this in this episode. 
where they're going off now to go find the other airbenders and they're going all over the world trying to recruit them to become air nomads. And at first, and this is actually how ingenious the, the, the show writers are, I'm thinking, you know, we're going to go back. It's going to be day by day. They're going to be picking up more and more people. But then I thought about it. It was like, if people are being born airbenders, that's one thing, because you're kind of like an air nomad. And I believe only air nomads were the ones that were becoming airbenders. So how does one handle a situation where someone who lives in the Earth Kingdom, someone who lives in the Fire Nation, or someone lives in the, the Southern Water Tribe, if that's their life, how do you then go to them and say, hey, I know you live here, but now you're an airbender, so you have to give up your entire life. You have to give up your worldly possessions. You can't eat meat. You know, you have to move and leave your family and come live here at the Air Temple. I never thought of that. It's, it's just great how they thought of that ahead of time. And they're trying to show you the conflicts that are arriving as they're trying to recruit people. It's almost like trying to recruit people for the army. I'm just, just saying. So they're having issues finding people who want to just drop everything, leave their family, leave their lives, to shave their heads, get tattoos, and become monks, essentially. To be honest with you, I would love to be an airbender, but if you told me I had to shave my head bald, give up meat, and leave my family, probably not going to do it. So, you know, that just goes to show you the great writing that's going to be going on in this season, and it, it's, it's just amazing. I, I, I have to admit, you know, um, I'm, I, I try, I'm trying to think about something that was a bit of a negative for this episode, and I can't find anything. I really can't. Um, one of the other great things about this season, which which I'm hoping they're going to continue to do, it looks like they're getting rid of the whole shipping thing that they had been doing with Mako and Korra and Asami, and, you know, that whole, you know, they, they kind of hinted at it and they played around with it a little bit. You know, saying, oh, he was my boyfriend and I kissed him while you were dating and blah, blah, blah. They kind of touched on it, but it doesn't seem like this season is going to be a big thing about, oh, who's the Avatar's boyfriend and, you know, back and forth, the whole girlfriend, boyfriend, bull crap. I'm glad that's done because to be quite honest with you, it just takes away from the show. I understand it's more so for the young audience, but I think they're more intelligent now and they don't need to see that kind of crap. Now, um, back to the actual episode, uh... Team Avatar shows up at one of the Earth Kingdom ports and they're looking for airbenders and they actually come up with an ingenious plan to kind of do like a circus act and show how cool it is to be an airbender and they end up meeting this young kid and I believe his name is Kai. Now Kai is, excuse me, is a legit airbender and he wants to go along with them. He says he's an orphan, that his family got killed in an attack and blah, blah, blah. As he's telling this story, I never believed him for one second. I was like, this little boy is lying out of his butt, and I can tell it a mile away. So, of course, Team Avatar accepts him because, again, at this point, they need people. So they'll say they'll take anybody at this point. And, of course, you know, he says these bandits are after him, and these bandits show up as they're getting ready to leave to the point where he, Korra goes out and fights these guys. Now, her being an Avatar, she should probably learn how to talk to people before attacking them, but she doesn't do that. She straight up attacks them. And after Cora pretty much dispatches these guys, she finds out that they're local police and that this boy, of course, was lying. So after getting Jules back, they decided they're going to take him on um, anyway. And then it looks like he's going to be the new member of Team Avatar, which I think is actually a great thing. Because, again, we have we were missing the younger, the younger element to the actual group. And I actually think teaching him how to be an airbender is great and you could already tell there's going to be the friction between Tenzin and Kai because you know Tenzin's daughter's there and they look to be about the same age and she's clearly into this kid so that's going to cause some drama too but I mean that's Avatar for you but overall if I'm if I had to if I had to give if I'm going to give this this episode this two episodes a score it's going to probably be a 9.5 out of 10 I mean this episode was absolutely amazing there was not a lot of downtime. I'm glad we moved on past spirits. I mean, like I said, it was a cool it was a cool season last year, but this right here is going to be fantastic. Oh, I'm, 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 I should slap myself. I forgot about the best part. So at the end of the episode, we get Zuko. So we get the Fire Lord, and his voice is awesome. Like I, I had mentioned before, in the 
my previous episode, uh, I didn't I didn't know how they were going to handle his voice. Came out perfectly. He sounds like a cool mix between Zuko and his and his grandfather, and I love it. Now, apparently, what's going on? Zuko mentions that the guys that have been breaking out of these max security prisons, they're strong enough to beat any bender one on one, and if they got together, they could pretty much take over the world. So. I'm just like, if these guys are gonna be the big bad of this season, I can only I can only imagine what's gonna happen when they free uh, the leader's girlfriend. It's it's gonna be epic. Now, uh, the only other thing that I that I did know this is that dragons are back. Now, I'm not sure if this is the same dragon that Zuko ended up riding off on was the same red dragon that when he was training with Aang back in the original Avatar series. There was a uh, the firebending masters episode where they ended up learning how to firebend together with actual dragons. So I don't know if that was the same dragon. I'm assuming so, but it was pretty awesome to see him fly off on that dragon. But I want to know what you guys thought of the episode. Let me know in the comment section below. Thumbs up if you are excited for Avatar being back and being on the right track. Uh,